What's good, y'all? Welcome back. Today, we're going to be reacting to the last comeback, Tim Richmond's 1988 Daytona journey. Um, someone suggested me this on Instagram. I appreciate you. Uh, but they, they said it would be a good watch. So now we're here. Original video link will be down in the description. Let's get into the video. Richmond across the finish line. The checkered flag to win the Firecracker 400. The Firecracker Tim 400. Richmond is about to win. has won the Budweiser at the Glen. Now there's a guy, Harry Hyde, that is absolutely proud. Harry, you know, at the beginning of the year, you said that Tim Richmond was really going to be the cat to be dealt with. Now, how do you feel about it? Well, I think he's great. I think he's great. I couldn't say enough for him. How many single girls up there tonight came to see Tim Richmond? So man's must be a legend. Wow, do you get that everywhere you go? Not all the time. <laughs> I'm just so proud of Harry and Tim that this year, and I don't know how many he's going to win. He said he was going to win eight. I think he can you win eight. You see oh, I, pro I promise you I'd win six, so I got two more to go. Well, Tim Richmond is just out of the car getting the cheers from the crowd. Win number seven, they've got a sign for him here. Now, they tell me you're going to change your lifestyle. What are you going to do now that the season is over? Well, right now we're uh, we're moving out to uh, Hollywood or somewhere out here in L.A. Hey! And, uh, take some acting classes and uh, do a little public relations work and uh, rest up uh, out in L.A. now. See you next year. I'll be here, Chris. Okay. My whole love. So, shortly after winning seven races in the 1986 NASCAR season, Tim Richmond fell seriously ill with pneumonia. Tim was diagnosed with AIDS, something he kept private. Oh, wow. There's a lot of mystery about all of this, Tim, from cancer to, to flu to AIDS to booze to all. What is the start of this? What got you to this state where you got so sick? I just wouldn't let myself think that I was sick. Richmond returned to competition in May. He won the first two-point race Last since he December, ran. Last December, the question was, would Richmond live until the next hour? The question at this hour is, will he win his third in a row? Two weeks ago, Pocono, Pennsylvania, he came home first, then went to Riverside, California, and did it again. The mischievous, flamboyant one, a driver larger than life himself, is ready to try to make it free. Tim Richmond's brush with death last year doesn't seem to have taken a whole lot out of him. Tim, you've still got that fire, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. I I uh, didn't seem like I, you know, lost anything there over the, the time that I was sick. Proud is the Manchurian and Tim Richmond stretching for three in a row, lengthens that car out a little and pushes the nose into first place. I saw Ooh, this is Hart close. Working on incredible race. He's in front. Richmond won the pole at Pocono in July, guaranteeing him a spot at the 1988 Bush Clash at Daytona. As we have completed 149 laps, a car smoking in turn number one, high against the wall. It's Tim Richmond in car number 25. He started up there, Bob, because the smoke started to come out as he went down the front stretch. He held it under control, and he steered it up there to get out of the way. Although he came back in 87 By mid August, Richmond's health was poor again and he resigned from good. Hendrick Motorsports. He resigned. Hold on. So you're telling me he got diagnosed with pneumonia, then AIDS, and then proceeded to just go back into NASCAR and just win like this. Man's doing his thing. From the Rick Hendrick team amidst rumors of drug abuse. Some say those rumors led to NASCAR's decision to implement a drug testing program for 1988. We're not talking this is a wild that NASCAR story has too. said they're going to have drug testing next year. You're going to go down and take the drug test and let that be the answer on that issue. Exactly. One driver who is not here today, but whose name has been in the headlines for the past several days is Tim Richmond. This, I don't know if this story can get any crazier than what it already started. President Bill France Jr. announced last weekend with no details that NASCAR will implement a drug testing program next year. I personally uh, cannot say that I have ever seen anybody use drugs in our sport or uh, 
you know, you, they're all kind of rumors, and, and you hear all kind of things, but personally, I have never seen it. And uh, there may have been, and if there, if there have been, uh, we need to put a stop to it. Topic of conversation in this segment, gentlemen, drug test drug program. testing. Daryl, is there a drug problem in NASCAR so far as you know? As, as far as I know, no. Uh, I'm not aware of, uh, of a problem. I'm like everybody else. I'm like Steve. I'm like you guys. I hear a lot of things, you know. And and we all have a phrase, you know, that we use a lot of times. That guy must be on drugs. Somebody does something really crazy or weird. I think we've made such, really made lighthearted out of the drug situation in our sport, to the point to where, at least as far as I'm concerned, I don't I don't think it's an epidemic, and I don't think it's a big problem. And I'll tell you right up front, I was shocked in New York when Billy France got up and said they were going to do the drug testing deal because for two years some of us have asked why don't we do it not why let's do it just why don't we why are you so adamant against doing it and they've never wanted to all of a sudden bam they didn't ask anybody we're going to do drug testing has there ever been a time when the drivers felt that another competitor had a problem and shouldn't be allowed to compete in that event yes there have See, because I was going to say, right, I was like, what type of, there's like no drug that can enhance like your performance when driving. I was like, the only thing it can do is, is unenhance your performance. Like it'll literally make you drive worse, which is like detrimental to everyone else around you. So I see why they put it in place. But like they said, why did it take so long for them to put it in place? And then I, all of a sudden just, oh yeah, here you go. Drug testing. This past year, a couple of times. Uh, I know of some occasions where there were some drivers and some officials that were very alarmed. But again, uh, uh, we don't know what we were. We don't know if we were alarmed about drugs or was it something else. Uh, it's hard to say. We didn't have, you know, we weren't testing, so we didn't know. And it's a deal where you just kind of look at a guy and say, "I think he's taking drugs." I, I, that's that's a tough one to call, you know. just in case it goes fast on january 20th and 22nd richmond appeared on espn's motor week illustrated and speedwalk programs to explain his plans for daytona in this segment we're going to talk with one of the most colorful and controversial figures in the recent history of motorsports flamboyance is his trademark but he has backed it up with great driving he was Rookie of the Year in the 1981 Indy 500, then set his sights on stock car racing. In 1986, he won more stock car races than any other driver. But a month later, a mystery began. At the peak of his success, Tim Richmond became ill. Press announcements said it was pneumonia. The rumor mill said otherwise. Tim said, I'll be back. And indeed, he came back. He made a triumphant return to the sport last May at the Winston. His fans were ecstatic. His driving absolutely flawless. He finished third in the race, and he completed that comeback by winning the next two events that he entered. Then he disappeared from the racing scene again, abruptly dropped oh, wow. by his team and apparently out of the stock car game. And I think that has to be the opening question that we ask Tim Richmond today. Are you out of the stock car game? Well, I don't think, uh, I don't believe I'm out of the stock car game. And let me clarify one thing. I resigned from Hendrick Motorsports. I didn't, uh, as some have written about, I have, I was not fired uh, or released. I, I resigned myself. Why? Uh, the main thing why I resigned um, was I didn't want to have to, I don't want to say let them down again, but they were counting on me at the beginning of that season. Uh, because of uh, the pneumonia I had, I had to back off. They had to change horses in the middle of the stream. Uh, it was when they put Benny in the car. And then when I, I started getting pneumonia the second time, I said, you know, I, don't, I can't have people counting on me until I know for sure that I'm going to, you know, continue on and not have to, uh, to back out. And that was, a, that was the, the main reason in my book why I resigned from Hendrick Motorsports. Tim, do you have a drug problem? I'm sorry, but that question has been asked more than once here, more than once by everybody. And I am not answering that question. I am going to let the drug test in Daytona answer it. And NASCAR can answer it for you all. Uh, and if they don't answer it the right way, then I'll have my little bottle and there will be another answer there. Because I know, I know whether it's dirty or whether it's clean, and it is clean. Pneumonia, you've said it all along. The rumor mill, as we said, has claimed drugs, AIDS, every imaginable kind of thing that took <clears throat> Tim Richmond out of the racing mainstream. 
Can you respond to the drug question? Was it drugs? Well, you know, I have quit being on the defensive on this subject. What I'm going to do is, is uh, come Daytona time, whether I'm driving a race car or not, I'm going to go down there, I'm going to put my money up to uh, try to secure a Winston Cup competitor's license. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have some people there with me to uh, take the, te not take the test, but uh, how can I say it? Uh, if, when I put something in one bottle, I'm going to put it in another one. Uh, I'm going to take their physical, and then we will, you know, we'll know the results. If I have a, a valid uh, competitor's license from NASCAR, we'll know if the, if the test was dirty or we're, clean. We're not, we're not. I, the way he's answering this question really bothers me. It's just, it's a straightforward question. It's a yes or no. So it's like, why is he going around it so much? Yeah, it's his business. He don't have to put it out there. But if it's like, you are, just, just say you are, and you know you're clean now, if that's the case, because he's saying he'll be clean by the race. If you, if, if you were, but you're clean now, you're fine. But don't like try to like, I don't know, just make these weird responses. I don't know. I just feel like he's avoiding the question. Not talking around it. NASCAR has said they're going to have drug testing next year. You're going to go down and take the drug test and let that be the answer on that issue. Exactly. Okay. But what that also leads us to is the next obvious question. You're going to try to get back into Winston Cup racing. You have an opportunity mm -hmm. to do that. You're qualified for the Bush Clash because you won a pole last year, right. but you don't have a ride. Well, I don't have a ride right now. Um, I've been approached by a couple car owners um, and I can understand why there might be a little hesitation there uh, a lot of rumors have been around uh, and I think the drug test down there will, will stop a lot of those rumors and will make it easier for for maybe a car owner uh, to make the decision to put me in his in his race car and hopefully go win the bush clash and maybe the Daytona 500. <laughs> you told me before we started that you have a racing dream and it has nothing to do with stock cars and nothing to do with Indy cars. No, my, my dream from day one, um, when I started thinking about race cars, was to get it to strap 3,000 horsepower uh, on, on my butt and, and that means a funny car. And uh, that's what I've always wanted to do is go drag racing. It's gonna be a drag <laughs> racer. Is your health such that you can run a full Winston Cup season? The bottom line is I don't, I'm not, I won't ever come back unless the schedule changes and run a full-blown Winston Cup tour for the Winston Cup Championship. Winston Cup Championship is very important, but I don't think it's as important as, you know, enjoying myself and the, and the time, the time it takes to do that, I don't, I'm not going to do that. Tuesday, January 26th, Tim met with NASCAR President Bill Francis Jr. and Vice President Look, I ain't even finna try to, <laughs> I ain't even finna try to pronounce that, but y'all, y'all, I'm pretty sure y'all know what it is, at their Daytona Beach office. Various accusations such as drug abuse and AIDS have been leveled against Tim Richmond in the past year, but he continues to battle back from critics. Next Tuesday, Richmond will meet with NASCAR's Bill France Jr. to discuss Tim's possible return to Winston Cup racing. Step one in Tim's comeback was a meeting with NASCAR officials, and after that meeting, I asked him about step two. Well, it uh, went very well. As far as I'm concerned, uh, NASCAR uh, says they, they have no problems with me. Uh, they welcome me back. Uh, they'd like to see me come back. I want to go back. Uh, I have no problems with them, and uh, so now that we've got that cleared up, now I need to go get a ride so I can go back. <laughs> You know, everybody talked about Tim uh, having hey, some problems with it's Dale. Tim was sick with the flu or the pneumonia or what, and it got him down. And uh, they've, they've tried to prove drugs on him, and, you know, he's taken drug tests, and he's, you know, he's been in the hospital. And surely if he had been on drugs, it would have came out when he went in the hospital because everybody All in the right. hospital don't keep secrets. So uh, I don't feel like Tim was using drugs. I think Tim had some other problems, and hopefully Tim can get his problems worked out and make a comeback. When Speed Week began, Richmond showed up at Daytona without a ride, but in talks to race Ken Reagan's Ford. Richmond attends the drawing for starting positions in the Bush Clash. He is scheduled to start 12th out of the 13 drivers in Sunday's exhibition race. Oh, yep, there it is. Car to be announced. On 
On Thursday afternoon, Richmond took NASCAR's drug test. His urine sample is flown to the California laboratory of Dr. Forrest Tennant, who also tested for the NFL performs the analyst on Friday. Richmond spends the day negotiating with Ken. Saturday morning, Richmond is informed by NASCAR officials that he tested positive for amphetamines and opium. Bro! You did all this! All of this! Just for it to come back positive. His samples will continue to be tested to verify its accuracy. He is indefinitely suspended. Come on, bro! Where are we at? On Saturday night, Richmond took a second drug test until Dr. Tennant completed his analysis. Richmond's suspension was stand. From the Daytona International Speedway, CBS Sports is pleased to bring you live the 1988 Bush Class. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Economaki. In auto racing, the driver who was fastest in the qualifying rounds wins the number one starting place, the coveted pole position. And today's rich 20-lap race is for NASCAR's fastest men of 1987. Now, should one man who belongs in this lineup isn't, Tim Richmond. And for more on that story, let's go topside now to my CBS broadcast colleague, Ken Squire. Chris, one year ago, Tim Richmond qualified for this race and missed it. It was serious pneumonia. This year, he is missing the race again after qualifying. It's just as serious. NASCAR made this release yesterday. Tim Richmond has been suspended indefinitely following a urinalysis test administered under the guidelines of NASCAR's substance abuse policy. Richmond tested true positive for a prohibited substance covered under the NASCAR substance program. He was tested and submitted to the test on Thursday. The test was given by Dr. Forrest S. Tennant on Friday, and the release was made yesterday. Just a few hours ago, I talked to Tim Richmond here in Daytona, and this was his reaction. Before we get into his reaction, we're going to save that for a part two. Because what the fuck does he have to say for himself? Okay? He went through all these interviews talking about, I'm clean, I'm going to pass, I'm going to be fine. Does it? Fucking fails. What? What did you do all this for? Look. I'm really excited for part two. I hope y'all are too. Um, it'll be out tomorrow. So be on the lookout, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all next video. I love y'all. Peace. They wanna fall, what? Back when I was down bad, I was stuck in the mud. That nigga didn't clean up Louis V on the so-so, what?